Yo, it's your boy LAZY. Shout out Country Fan Mail, Sacramento to Compton. You already know what it is. Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? It's your boy Clue Don, Country Fan Mail Podcast. And as you already hear, I'm here with the boy Compton's own Jason Lazy. What's going on with you? Man, LAZY, nothing much, man. You know, just trying to tap in with you, you know. That's it. That's your yes, main sir. thing. Yes, Hey, I appreciate you coming on the platform, platform for real, man. Cause yeah, you've been you've been making a lot of moves, man. A lot of moves musically and elsewhere. Well, we're gonna get into all that for sure. I appreciate it, man. Just trying to get on your level, you know. <laughs> Already, man. Y'all ready. So the first thing I gotta ask you, man, what was the first song that you listened to when you woke up this morning? First song I listened to I woke up this morning was uh Big Moves or Big Money by Money Man. Where, where, where? Okay, okay. Why that yeah. song specifically? I don't know. It just hype you up to hustle and stuff. Cause I program in the morning, so I wake up at like five, six, and you know I do like a hundred push-ups, and then I do like fifty reps and a few squats. So it just keeps you ready to, you know, go get that guap. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you definitely got to get up and get right to it, man. Cause I'm the same way, man. That morning playlist, that shit is important. And speaking of yeah. morning playlist, man, I gotta be a hundred percent honest with you, man. Like. 100% honest with you. Ever since I heard that joint, I think it's called Got A Few. Off this oh, got, uh, got A Couple? Got A Couple? Man, listen, that's been, yo, that is on my morning <laughs> playlist on the way to work. I'm trying to tell you, that joint right there, it give me so damn hype, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, you know, man. For sure, man, for you. sure. Like, it was a dope, dope-ass track. And I, what I also really loved is that, um, for, I mean, throughout that whole project, which we definitely got to dive into, is that you had a lot of female MC features which I don't think I've heard that many female MCs on the same project in a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out Raider Savage and shout out Ash Bash, the rapper. Yeah, no, them the homegirls. Yeah, I, I like them as for female rappers. They, you know, they're good lyricists. They they know how to do their wordplay. For sure, for sure. Yeah, they, yeah, definitely, yeah. they definitely different on that wordplay. I feel like they so slept on, you know, in the time when we kind of phase now to like that Barbie rap. And we kind of getting back into, you know, saying women coming out with the like with the real bars. I could definitely appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And they got a cool little fan base too. So you know, yeah, they get their point across. But um, okay. but yeah, so man, still sticking on that project, man. So no more pain, man. I, I feel like you you went through a lot of different uh, went through a lot of different phases in that project. You know what I'm saying? You you know, I feel like well, even with the first track, I think it's a uh, Starbucks. And uh, oh, yeah, that track going viral. Shout out Starbucks. Yeah, Starbucks, man. Yeah, that track right there. Like, I think the first line that really had me fucked up with it was just like, uh, uh, we can have sex on the wall, just like a poster. That <laughs> shit <laughs> took me out. <laughs> yeah, man. You know how it gets sometimes. <laughs> For sure. So tell me, tell me the mindset that you had behind, you know, what I'm saying making some of those tracks. Because I feel like, you know, the good thing, what I liked about your music is that it had those, it had those funny bars that really just kind of took you out, but it also really still brought you back. It wasn't like, it wasn't too funny to the point where it was like, you know, say corny or something like that. Oh, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. No, nah, I just, uh, I just left Starbucks actually. <laughs> <laughs> and I, that was just that track was just like one of those. I just freestyled it like the whole time I was in the car. So I already had it written in my head. So I just went and dropped it because it was just, like you said, it was catchy. Yeah. You know, I like Starbucks, Vanilla Bean, Frappuccino, Doritos, <laughs> Chili <laughs> Cheese, all my Fritos. Adios, me. So, you know, it's just a tongue twist. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That shit, yeah, that shit have me fucked up, though. And, and, you know, I go to Starbucks when I'm happy and stuff. So no more pain. You know, let me get, you know, add some whipped cream on that. Yeah, you know. And that was a dope ass intro. I mean, especially you know, I really, I, I didn't even. I'm glad you explained that because you know, what I'm saying, I feel like intros, for one day, like if I if the intro isn't good, like I might listen to this, I might listen to the rest of the album, but I'm not gonna be as excited for it. But when that first track really kind of you know, what I'm saying set it up. So the fact that you just say you know for the no more pain name the first track Starbucks and you went you go to Starbucks when you you know when you're happy, that shit just brings all full circle for me. You know, what I'm saying I appreciate it. Yeah, and the last mixtape was called Suicidal Depression. So that's why this one is like no more pain. Like I'm happy now, you know, like everything is good. So, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So tell me about that. I mean, cause you, you put out, you put out what about four or five, four or five tapes, you know what I'm saying? The last, last two years. Oh yeah. 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 You know, I just, I like to do concepts, you know, keep a story, you know, I like to keep it real. So, For sure. you know, 
And then I didn't even know that, like, uh, it was, like, uh, mental health month and all that when I put it out and all that. I just made it because I had a lot of friends that, you know, passed away from suicide and and stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, I was feeling depressed. I was taking, like, some Xanax and stuff, you know, because all these interviews to just to keep the hype down. And those pills make you the side effects of suicide and stuff like that. Mm. So I was really relating to people. You know, I was feeling, you know. I was really just gone, you know. Yeah, yeah. Especially when you're doing 18 hours, 16, 18 hour days, and you don't talk to people you by yourself, you know. Yeah, it's hard to trust. You know how it go, man. For sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, like, so kind of, you know, kind of going back, but sticking on the same note, kind of going back to, you know, Young Lazy, you know, coming up, Compton Cali. Like, how was that? And how, how did you kind of, you know, saying, uh, find yourself maneuvering? Uh, I'll say through the situation because it's like I'm I'm originally from the south, so our perception of California is like it's either you're this or you're that, and it's like it, it is just like everybody's just fighting, it's all just crazy and all you know what I'm saying. Like so, it's like how was it really actually growing up? Yeah, that's really how it is. Like if you're not <laughs> from around here, then you're gonna get fucked up. <laughs> so yeah, it's best you know somebody, and then even saying names didn't really matter then, but. But now, yeah, it's dangerous. You know, you got to watch out for the cars. Got to, yeah, see the gangbang, sell drugs, or play sports. Yeah. Sure. So, no, nah, it, it's everything that you thought it is. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. what, what route did you take? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, would, would you, uh, you know what I'm saying, without going too deep into, you know, either one, which, which route would you find yourself? Okay, in? well, I, I did it all, you know. You know, you know you're younger, you into gangbanging, but, you know, I ain't got a 401k. So I started getting into the, you know, getting the pills and stuff off. And then after that, that's when I started doing the music. Because, you know, everything was leading to jail or the graveyard. So I was like, yeah. What was the first time that you remember picking up the pen? Oh, first time I remember picking the pen was when I was like eight or nine. Boss, people calling me. Let me put my phone on Do Not Disturb. That's all good. (laughs) <laughs> um, yeah, I was like eight or nine. My brothers wouldn't let me play, play the Sega with them. You know, the Sega Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had the little race car controller one. So he told me, he was like, hey, write a song. When you write, when you finish writing the song, you can come play with us. So For sure. I was like to that biggie, it was all a dream. Okay, he okay. That shit, up. that shit was trash. <laughs> I, don't even remember, I don't even remember this song. When you yeah. when you think that you like, cause I feel like there was like um for every like for all artists, there's like the, a moment where they kind of they realize that people actually start fucking with their music too, and I and I feel like you know what I'm saying we could definitely you know look back at like you know I think it was 2020 2021 like I I, I want to say it was 2020 you had like a really like that's when you like really really was starting to blow up as far as getting on other people's radar, but like when do you think it was for your inner circle? Damn, that's crazy! You caught that. <laughs> I got to give you a tip man. after this, B. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, so I really thought about it when I was in New York shooting a video, the Statue of Liberty video. A fan, a little girl, ran up to me when I was on the Empire State Building and hugged me. And you know me, I'm like, get off me, little white girl! Like, I'm like, hey, hey, get off me! And she was crying and stuff, like, oh, I know your music and stuff, so. That shit was like, it was deep. You know, I kept it G at the time. But yeah. in my head the whole time, I'm like, what's the chances of me being way in New York on the Empire State Building and then this little girl know who I am? So yeah, that's I when know. I was like, all right, I got to take this shit serious, serious. That's so, wild. What, what, do you, what do you think was that moment? Like, what do you, what do you think was the, uh, the, uh, the, the content that actually reached out to her? Um, I forgot what song she told me. I forgot. I forgot. Yeah. I can't even remember. I still follow her on Instagram. No, I got to ask it. I forgot. That's wild, though. That's yeah, that's, that's what that I said, though. I was like, that's the one in a million. She was all For crying. Sure. I'm like, damn, okay. Her dad, brother's there. I'm like, these white niggas going to trip. <laughs> you know, but they was cool. They was cool. They was cool. Yeah, that's wild, man. So, like, so, so what was it about that time? Because I feel like, you know, I mean, we all know what was all going on around that time. It was the pandemic. Everybody was in the crib and or, you know, 
doing whatever. Uh, you know, what I'm saying everybody kind of was going through the same shit at the same time to an extent. Um, what what was it about that time that really, you know, what I'm saying that uh, I don't know, that did it for you. Uh, well, really, I um, I put a commercial on VH1 or MTV, one of those. I put them on both, but so I had to utilize everybody being in the house because, like, the time I blew up, that's when COVID happened. So all my shows started going down because everything was closing. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I put a commercial up and stuff to keep people going, you know, and then that's when it, it kept it going, it kept the buzz up because the, was- without the shows, it was hard to keep it going. But the commercial really saved me, you know, so. For sure. That, that, yeah, was, that, yeah. that was definitely smart, man. I feel like a lot of people lost a lot of steam over that time frame. And, um, you know, there was I feel like they were looking at that artist like uh, I think it was uh, the baby who was just he was just traveling and touring and touring and doing all this crazy stuff all throughout the pandemic. And people was looking at him like he was crazy. But he was Yeah. Just- yeah. He wore a diaper to his interview. Yeah. 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 He was doing some some <laughs> eye catching, you know, some clout chasing shit. Yeah. Yeah. It was smart. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't wear a diaper and all that, but hey, there's a there's a lot of shit that people do. You know, say so I feel like I feel like at some point in time, majority of the people that we, you know, saying I say we as like in the culture that we look up to, has at some point in time done something that was for clout, whether yeah. whether we realize it or not. You know, what I'm saying and hey, I, I I'll just go ahead and leave that one there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so kind of diving back into your music, man. So like, what's what's you know what's some of your mindset that you when you actually go into you know saying making your music? Um, is it all just you know I know you said Starbucks, you would literally just leave it stuff, but you know yeah, it's it's always I always mainly just tell my life, you know, stories or situations I was in, or it's rare if I it's rare if the story's made up. Everything is mainly just from the heart, you know, that's that bipolar in me. <laughs> so like music, I'm really entwined when music comes on. So like, cause I listen to everything, country, pop, everything, you know? So sure. I just really, I just, the beat talks to you, you know, like as an artist, musician, they know what I'm saying. So like, I just yeah. go off of whatever it makes me feel. That's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. And, and you know, and I, and I think that, that, uh, that eclectiveness, <clears throat> with your music and what, how you listen and how much you listen to what you're going to talk into, uh, you know, going to, you know, um, some of your other tracks as well. Um, but would that attribute to the fact that like, I read that you about to be a NASCAR driver. Am I tripping? Oh yeah. Yeah. So the school is in Arizona, one of the schools in Arizona to go training and get the, you know, the qualifications and everything. But yeah, yeah. I always wanted to be a NASCAR driver. So now that I'm able to like actually pursue it, I was going to do it sometime next year. So, you know, but now I'm trying to get this house. So I'm like, you know, responsibilities or goals. <laughs> but that one, and that one is more of a, it's more of a hobby goal. So that's why I was like, all right, I think I'll wait and get the house first, trying to get one in Vegas instead of, you know, Compton or Watts. Sure. So once I get the house and then yeah, I was going to go do the class. It's about, it's about two months altogether. And then they say it's hard for black people to get, to get sponsored. You know, so that's why I really want to do it. Cause I mean, we got a black woman now, but I thought I did read that. Yeah, yeah, she's like the first black woman in um, the tape, like any any lead position in NASCAR. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I was like, and I think she was sponsored through like family or something like that. But we need to change that, you know. So yeah, yeah, when right. I go out there busting two hundred on the track, <laughs> show them how we do it in Cali. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, yeah, man. Hey, that's what's up, man. I was, I was, I was tripping when I read it, but it was like a good trip because I've never heard that shit before, especially coming from a black person. You know, and, <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, my music and stuff—you can tell, like, oh, I'm different. My music is like yeah. universal. It's not that Compton shit. It's, it's definitely <laughs> different. It's, de- it's, de- it's definitely different. I think that's that's what that's what uh, that drew me to it because you know, I a lot of people send me their stuff, but you know, when I when I hear something that you know, it's like when I'm actually surprised that first time I hit when I hit play, I'm just like, yo, like this was a bop. <laughs> I was at work while I was listening to it. Man, you could tell the truth, man. My shit trash. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, here's, here's the thing about me. I'm gonna be real. Like everybody that I try to bring on to the show or that that you know requests come on to show or I actually reach out to whatever, I try to be a fan <laughs> of it first. I try to find some about what they got going on. And you know, saying be a fan of it because I ain't gonna just have you on here wasting your time. And, and no, nah, and I love constructive criticism, so I appreciate it too. You know, like, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, all and let feedback me, is great. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I, honestly, like, for me, I, I like the consistency, but at the same time, I like the fact that you're, like, with really any of the tapes that I, that I listened to or that I went through, none of, like, they didn't all sound the same. As far as, like, each track, I, I hate, you know, when people try to make concept albums, but... Oh, and it's, like, repetitive? Sounds the same. Exactly. Like, that's... Oh, yeah. Like, you I, definitely I, I, won't I, get that with me. You... <laughs> What's up? You definitely won't get that with me. Mine's is more universal. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. And speaking of Universal, man, so you just dropped another track where you're, you, it's a whole, it's all Spanish, right? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the, that's one of the tracks that's doing great in like Rosarito and stuff. But yeah, yeah. So I got like five Spanish rappers on there. Um, damn, I hope I'm saying their names like Oscar, Scissor, and the Bar Nightmares. But yeah, they, it's all in Spanish. It's called Spanish Thing. So Man. I was supposed to go out there, but, you know, they like cartel and all that. So it's a little different when you're scared. So I'm going to try to fly them out to Cali and get it and get it done in, like, San Pedro or something. <laughs> for sure, for sure. How, <laughs> how, how did that happen? Like, how did that How did that even connect? I met them at a show in Mexico. And then, you know, it was just like, what's up, fool? What's up, fool? I got their emails and shit. And then right. I sent them some tracks. And then they sent me some tracks. And then that shit was just clicking ever since. Man, and they just did a couple TV shows too, so they they got their buzz and everything going. That's what's up. That's what's up. So are you, are you speaking? Are you speaking Spanish on um, the whole track as well, or are you kind of? Oh doing... no, no, I kept the English. Nah, the um, the track I got going with these people in Aruba, I'm doing Spanish and English. So like, yeah, yeah, I'm getting good with my Spanish. So this one I come out with next year when I fly to Aruba, it'll be like mainly Spanish. For sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you trying to really you really out here everywhere, man. Like <laughs> you know? Oh man, man. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to get back to Paris, man, but it's a little hard. And then I'm um it's crazy. I'm trying to do this track with this guy in India. So yeah, yeah, because they big with the hip hop culture over there too. Yeah, yeah. That would so be, I'm hoping the homegirl sets I don't it even up. Think I've heard of it. I don't even think that would that would be the first. No, nah, I know, I know. That's why I'm trying to do it, you know, put it out there so people be like, oh, this nigga rapping with the world. That's that's crazy, man. That, that's wild. You you tapped in with Africa yet? No, nah, no. Nah, I talked to, like, a few females out there, but I haven't met no rappers yet. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I got yeah. a small little fan base out there. Already, man. It's, that man, That's wild, man. Yeah, you definitely you definitely reaching out to everybody. And, and, and one thing that... um. Like I said, one of the consistencies, another one of the consistencies I got with your music is that majority of it, even though the even though some of the topics, you know, what I'm saying are all varied and they go different ways, is usually general in a general sense feel good music in my personal opinion. Like, oh, it's, I appreciate it's, that. You know, so, so, like with that, you know, one of the things that I like to ask everybody in a real way, because you know, in passing, yo, you good? How you doing? I'm good. Da 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 da. But in a real way, like, how are you doing? Oh, how am I doing? Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I'm doing great. I appreciate that, man. No, I'm doing good. You know, got the baby mama waiting on me to get the soccer practice. But <laughs> besides the normal life stuff, no, life is good. Life is good. I'm looking for, like, you know, trying to find a little four units, six unit apartments to buy. You know, I'm saving up to get the house. Um, I just got to get these. Man, it's hard trying to get uh, label meetings. So that's the tricky part, you know, so. For sure. Sure. So that, that's pretty much it. That's the down part. People don't give out plugs. You know how our culture is? They're like crabs in a bucket. They just... Everybody want to hold on to what they got. Yeah, yeah. And that's probably why... Give me one second, boss. Oh, really? And that's probably why I do a little better because my karma come back, you know? Yeah. I mean, Tenfold. Yeah. Yeah, you got to it's going out there the right way, man. That's all that really matters, man. But so I'm gonna bring it full circle. Just one last question for you, man. Um, okay. If you had an opportunity to to get a message out to everybody in the world, I mean, you pretty much talking to everybody in the world already. So <laughs> you know, <what> <laughs> you definitely got a lot of reach, man. But if you if you had a message to like simultaneously get a message to everybody, what would it say? Um, keep faith in God and just keep going hard. It's gonna get better. Okay. Simple and simple, man. <laughs> That's all I can say. It's going to get better. Already, man. For sure, man. Hey, I appreciate you coming on here, man. You already know, man. Next time down there, we got we definitely got to tap in, man. For sure. Oh, no. I appreciate you for having me, man. Um, We should fly out. I should fly out and we should do like a live interview or something one of these days. 
Hey, for sure, man. Just keep me posted, man. Keep me posted. We could definitely make that happen, bro. All right. Bad, 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 man. I appreciate you for having me, G. Already, man. And thank you for everybody that's watching, everybody that tapped in, including the motherfucking Don Country Fan Mail Podcast. We out of here. Ah, LAZY. Boom.